It's a lovely red hot summer's day. Not a cloud in the sky, except one. And it looks like a mushroom. It's a nuke and it's gone off big time. The fireball and your life flash before your eyes. And in that split second, you remember the disappointment of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Nuking the fridge. Hell, it worked for Indy, so it might work for you, right? There's no time to think about it. You dive into your temporary home and wait it out, with only a mouldy piece of cheese to keep you company. What are the chances of survival? Pretty low if you eat that cheese. As for the nuclear blast, I'll let Indy's creator, George Lucas, explain. The odds of surviving that refrigerator, from a lot of scientists, are about 50-50. So, will his argument hold any weight? Is surviving a nuclear blast in a fridge less science fact and just more of Lucas's trademark science fiction? I'm Stu, this is Debunked, and we're here to sort the truths from the myths and the facts from the misconceptions. This video is made possible with the support of The Great Courses Plus, an on-demand learning resource with courses led by the world's greatest professors. Okay, since Indiana has provided us with a nice example, we'll use his scenario to base our argument around. First things first, how powerful is the bomb we're talking about here? Well, the movie is set in 1957 and depicts an American nuclear test. This would coincide with the real life Operation Plume Bob, which saw the US drop 29 bombs in the Nevada desert in order to study their effects. One bomb in particular, codenamed Smokey, seems a good candidate, as it was mounted on a tower, like the bomb in the movie. Smokey wasn't exactly a small nuke either. It had a yield of 44 kilotons. For reference, that's about three times as powerful as the bomb dropped on Hiroshima, and twice that which landed on Nagasaki in World War II. In our hypothetical scenario, anything within 360 meters of ground zero is getting incinerated by the fireball. I'm not sure there's a fridge on Earth that can keep its contents ice cool in the face of temperatures reaching millions of degrees Celsius. Imagine climbing into a fridge and then hurling it directly into the sun. It's not likely to go well. But maybe a refrigerator could prove handy when dealing with other pesky elements of a nuclear blast, namely the shockwave and radiation. Now, there is evidence to suggest that an appliance could survive in such trying conditions. Back in 1955, Another American test called Operation Q saw the US government build an entire model village, similar to the one in Indy 4, and optimistically named it Survival Town. Interestingly for us, one concrete house, located 1.4 kilometers away from the center of the blast, had a big chest freezer in it, which was packed with food rather than archaeologists. It's a bit more spacious than Indy's fridge and would have been a lot cooler, but as a real life point reference, it's not a million miles away. After the test was complete, a fair chunk of survival town was blown to kingdom come. Remarkably, the freezer was still there in the house. According to the official report, Overpressure had creased the freezer door, sprung the springs, and broken off the plastic lining on the bottom side of the freezer door. Essentially, it was fine. However, before you go jumping into fridges or freezers when the apocalypse arrives, we need to take a closer look at what happened down in survival town. Three. One, zero. For a start, the bomb dropped that day was noticeably less powerful than the one we proposed in our scenario. The Operation Q nuke was 29 kilotons, which would have produced a fireball reaching 300 meters from the center. The most intense part of the shockwave from such a detonation would have only stretched as far as 0.67 kilometers. Within this zone, the additional pressure, otherwise known as overpressure, from the blast would be enough to destroy most buildings and there'd be hurricane force winds. We're talking around 800 kilometers per hour and fatalities would approach 100%. Collapsing roofs and flying debris do have a tendency to cause casualties. Even heavily built concrete buildings would likely be demolished or severely damaged. So why did the freezer survive on this occasion? There are two key factors here. The overpressure caused by the shockwave, which is measured in pounds per square inch and is anything above normal atmospheric pressure, would likely have dissipated at 1.4 kilometers, going from 20 psi to around 5 psi or lower at this point. Even with such a substantial drop, 
Wind speeds would likely have been around 260 km per hour, and damage would be significant, with most residential buildings tumbling down. However, there is a chance that solid concrete buildings would survive in this area of the shockwave. And this is exactly what happened to our freezer in Survival Town. There were five different types of houses, and the freezer was placed in... A fourth is a single-story rambler made of precast lightweight concrete. Walls and roof panels are joined by steel lugs. It was one of only two buildings that weren't demolished at the 1.4 km range. This was one lucky freezer. It's also worth bearing in mind that from 3 psi of overpressure or below, wind speeds would peak at 160 km per hour. And while serious injuries might be common, the risk of dying is reduced. Diving into the freezer at Survival Town probably wouldn't have made much difference to your chances of survival because it was already a reasonable distance from the blast and snugly inside a concrete house. Going back to our original scenario, a 44 kiloton nuke would produce a 20 psi shockwave up to 0.77 kilometers away from ground zero, with the smaller but still deadly 5 psi shockwave stretching up to 1.62 kilometers from the center of the blast. Jumping in a fridge here really won't help you, unless you want to be buried in a refrigerator. You'd be battered to death inside as it was carried along by the shockwave. But let's be positive. Let's say you jump in a fridge. The building you're in gets obliterated, but the fridge doesn't fall over, trapping you inside. Even then, you'd be stuck in the middle of a nuclear blast area with radioactive fallout raining down courtesy of a mushroom cloud. How long are you going to have to stay inside? Let me put it this way. Within an hour, the radioactive fallout will have decayed by 50%, and within 24 hours, you're looking at 80%. Hell, after two weeks, 99% of that annoying radioactivity will be gone. Aside from the fact that there probably wouldn't be enough food and water inside your fridge to last two weeks, there's also the troublesome supply of air to worry about. Assuming you have an airtight seal, you'd only have a few hours of oxygen before you suffocated to death. The smaller you are, or the bigger the fridge you're in, the more time you have. But either way, eventually, you'd have to step out into nuclear fallout that was still dangerous. That puts you at risk of acute radiation sickness and potential death. For those of you wondering what would happen to Indy, well, his airborne escapades inside the fridge wouldn't have even taken place, according to molecular biologist Dr. David Shechner. Estimating that Indy was 0.6 kilometers away from the blast, Shechner claims that the force required to lift the fridge and accelerate it to speeds shown in the movie wouldn't have lifted it at all. Instead, it would have crushed it and then some. The pressure would have been 47 times greater than the pressure required to liberate a railway car from its track and crush it. So a tiny fridge had no chance. Right, so getting into a fridge has just killed Indy and hasn't really helped you deal with a massive shockwave either. But what about offering some protection from the radiation? Well, our freezer in Survival Town certainly did the trick. The report noted all samples from the freezer were free of induced radiation. And went on to conclude, Samples from the freezer were found to be entirely safe for human consumption. Portions of these frozen foods were used to prepare a meal under emergency conditions. The freezer would definitely have been inside the radiation radius of the bomb, which would have reached 1.5 kilometers from the detonation point. For our larger bomb, Smokey, that radius would have been 1.6 kilometers. So from this point on, we'll treat them both the same to keep things simple. Anyone caught inside this zone would be in serious trouble. We're talking death rates of 50% at best, 90% at worst. If you were lucky, you might die in a few hours. Others could linger on for weeks. But if the freezer kept the food safe, then maybe you think the lead-lined fridge would have done the same for Indiana Jones. Well, think again. A 2016 entry in the Journal of Physics Special Topics, titled Indiana Jones and the Fridge to Freedom, calculated that the lead lining would have been too thin to protect him. We conclude that it is unlikely Indiana would have remained unharmed from the gamma radiation as the minimum thickness of lead needed is 4.58 centimeters, which is likely to be greater than the thickness of the lead lining within the fridge. To make matters worse for Indy, a nuclear bomb the size of Smokey would actually require 5.74 centimeters of lead to provide a safe level of shielding. 
These days, lead-lined fridges are generally used to store radio pharmaceuticals and other radioactive material. But even they only tend to have a lead lining around 0.3 cm thick. So nope, jumping in a household fridge wouldn't have saved his cells from an unhealthy dose of radiation. Now I know what you're thinking. How come the food in the freezer was okay then? Well, I don't know whether it was lead lined or not. But working on the assumption that it wasn't, it all comes back down to the house it was in. Yep, concrete is a pretty decent thing to have between yourself and a non-coming nuclear blast. Approximately 60 centimeters of concrete will reduce gamma radiation by a factor of a thousand, and just six centimeters of concrete will halve it. If you want to be really safe, two meters of concrete will reduce it by a factor of a billion. Without knowing exactly how thick the walls were in Survival Town's concrete house, it seems like that might explain why the food stayed safe. Either way, unless you have a fridge with an extremely generous lead lining, it's probably not going to make much difference to your odds of surviving Judgment Day. So, what should you do in the event of a nuclear attack? Handily, we've already put together a few tips that might just save your life should the worst happen. But before you start learning about that, our sponsors have an entire course available that can further your understanding of the exciting world of nuclear physics. We begin with a detailed examination inside the atom itself, explaining the structure, function, and forces of nuclear particles. The Great Courses Plus is an on-demand learning resource that has thousands of courses covering everything from history and literature to travel and cooking, all led by the world's greatest professors. And just in case you've had your fill of nukes and atoms, then check out any of these courses on the theme of myths and misconceptions, and get ready to debunk some widely held beliefs about science and culture. Fans of Debunked can get a free trial by visiting thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash debunked. Support from partners like The Great Courses Plus enable us to keep making videos, so please head on over and check out this incredible learning resource. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.